Okay, you're welcome back to the programme. Delighted to welcome back on to it Keely Tavener, a psychotherapist, author and coach, taking your relationship and emotional questions right now. Good morning to you. Lovely to see you again, Keely. How are you keeping? All good. No dramas. Can't complain. That's fantastic, isn't it? I was chatting to someone recently who uh, was at the very start of uh, a relationship and they were concerned that the person was made a few references about their appearance, their weight and stuff. Uh, mm. But still, they they intend to, to continue in that relationship, and that's completely up to them. Would that be a, fla- a, re- a red flag to you? Uh, you know, maybe they might hope to sort of, you know, change them in some way or other. Or if someone started making sort of kind of personal comments, very subtle even, would uh, you be concerned about that? I'm a massive fan of, of clarity. And one of the things I do is want to have a conversation about that. What, what did you mean by that? Mm. It's just one way to bring that to the forefront. This is especially important if that person tends to avoid conflict. So if your natural position is to avoid conflict, smooth things over, then actually this situation, especially if you've had a history of problematic relationships where you're a yes person, you end up kind of in a one-way relationship dynamic, then it can be a really important point to highlight that for your own well-being, especially if you're trying to break unhelpful cycles where you constantly you know where where someone nitpicks at you and you don't defend or stand up for yourself it can be quite vital and how do you strike that balance you know i mean i think i think the majority of us are non-confrontational we maybe peacemakers we we accept stuff and put it you know we put it down to something or other make excuses whatever it might be but then again, you don't want to get to the stage where you're ultra cynical of everyone and challenge people on absolutely everything. How do we change ourselves as individuals? And it's not just in relationships. I think because the, this could be in the workplace, Keely. It could be in, in negotiating the purchase of a vehicle. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But how do we sort of, you know, change ourselves that we, we, we can speak up a little bit for ourselves? Absolutely. I think one of the things is is it's not that you be, you know, you're being... Um, over hypersensitive because that's one of the things that people throw at you if you do challenge them but it's about things that unsettle you so if someone is making a comment about your appearance or your weight and it unsettles you and potentially you've had an issue with avoiding those sort of things in the past and people you know you may have well been bullied in the past or you it, it it can be an opportunity for you to begin to challenge that one of the ways I find Challenging it doesn't necessarily mean it has to go into high conflict. You can literally ask someone, what did you mean by that? It's a simple question, isn't it? And it puts the onus on them rather than you feeling that you have to sort of analyse the whole situation. Absolutely. You're asking them for clarity. And often what is likely to happen is if people then think and then they realise there is an agenda, then sometimes they may start to say, oh, what are you being like that for? They can try and... um, discombobulate mm. you by suggesting it's some sort of issue of your own now if you take if you take that bait you know fair enough but as we get older we get a little bit wiser and that can be really important information to pay attention to, to because what we avoid in the here and now has a habit of coming back with a vengeance in the future yeah almost invariably yeah uh, my best friend recently met a man on a date on a dating app which she's head over heels about, but I recently saw him still on a dating app, so I matched with him. (laughs) Sorry, I just could could see this scenario where the the two friends are chatting to the same fellow, but anyway, I'll start again. My best best friend recently met a man on a dating app, which she's head over heels about, but I recently saw him still on the dating app, so I matched with him to see what he would do, and sure enough, he started a conversation. I've kept the conversation casual, so they're still talking. I don't want to break her heart, but I'm wondering if I should straight out tell him why I matched him and that if he's not interested in my friend, to then go and let her down gently. Hmm. So what's the question here? I'm the question is that the so, question. Uh, there's a, 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 someone dating a guy, her yeah. friend saw yeah. him on a date nap and matched him. Yeah. They're still chatting away, albeit casually, and the friend wants to know what to do. Her best friend is going out with a guy that's still engaging with the opposite sex, or the same sex, but in this case, the opposite sex, on a dating app. Well, my, my, my loyalty will always be to my friend. Mm. I'd have to have a word. I'd have to have a word. It's, 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 a, it's a no-brainer. You go straight to her and say, but I no, just I wonder then, uh, I, if I were the best friend going out with this guy, I would say to her, well, did you smash? 
and you start chatting. Yeah. That would be, yeah. that's a bit. Simple as. But, you Simple know, as. Right. okay. My uh, way is to you, and, and this is a type of thing that is often happening in people are meeting online. The other person may not be offline. They're still keeping their options open, which is fine if they're going to be truthful about it. The pain comes from thinking you're the exclusive. And when you're not exclusive, these sort of situations arise. The friend, in my mind, your loyalty is to your friend. Mm. I'd, I'd have a word. There's a lot of people sitting in situationships, right? And, mm. you know, one partner's really happy with that. The other, it's got a name now. So maybe that's it. It's not a relationship. It's not a friendship. It's a situationship. And they find themselves stuck in it. Well, they choose. Unco- they choose. Right. I'm a fan of choice. Okay. You see. Yeah. Well, that's it, isn't it? People don't always like that they have choices, but often we choose, but we're not conscious of it. Unless you're in a coercive control relationship, which is a whole number def- yeah. different kettle of fish. But just because something's given a label, it doesn't mean it's a thing. There's no such thing as a situation ship because there's always going to be emotions in there, isn't there? It's like well, a friends think, with I, benefits. You know, I mean. It, That can't last long term, surely. Absolutely not. But the challenge is that that, that there's new new, um, terms to try to describe relationships. It's a bit like, you know, I think that kind of really got sort of started through Facebook. And Mm -hmm. it was like, you know, um, you know, in a relationship or something like rather not say. So it's kind of evolved out of, of people publicly declaring where they're at. A situationship clearly means that there's, there isn't committal um it's a situation you know sounds like you know if there's a if there's a situation on the m5 usually something's gone wrong you know there's an incident an accident <laughs> but our emotions um, aren't that flexible we can't we we don't we haven't evolved whereby our uh emotions are that elastic they simply aren't absolutely not so you can find all manner of terms to define it but the reality is Something is awry in the relationship that maybe it works for you on one dimension, but often people pretend or they 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 think that maybe having a a physical relationship, a sexy relationship is sufficient, but it but it pinches them on the arse. It often comes back to them. So that's a real challenge for people with whatever you want to call it, uh, whether it's a hookup situation, uh, situationship, friends with benefits. Something's a right, and often that can come and pinch people on the ball. Yeah, and often people might say, um, it suits me when it doesn't, but they don't want to lose what they have and they don't think they're going to get what they want. Um, I'm having a serious relationship issue with my mother. Herself and my dad split up many years ago, and almost every day since that, I've been reminded that we played a part in their marriage breaking up, and because of me and my sister, she was unable to meet anyone else. I'm sick of her. Christmas was the final nail. My boyfriend is annoyed and says, I can't cut her off. Your mother is not supposed to make you feel this way. I guess not every woman is capable of being a parent. As much as I despise her at times, I also fear a total cut-off. Any advice? This, this kind of reminds me of some of the work I do with individuals when we work with narcissistic mothers and how difficult it is for people to get to the point where they totally go non-contact and cut off parents. The reality is people do cut off their parents, especially if they're particularly toxic. The challenge you have is that is most people won't understand it and most people will judge you for it and think that something's wrong. You're the person who knows exactly what you're contending with with your mother. And if, for example, it means that you need to create space or you need to be mute in terms of your communication with her for a while, then that actually may well be to your benefit. The challenge you have is generally people don't give you the thumbs up for that. If your mother is blaming, that generally means she's taking zero responsibility for herself in the situation and therefore she becomes a victim therefore trying to burden you with guilt often about you know it's probably fair to assume you didn't ask to be created you didn't ask for them to bring you into the world so clearly that is deflecting blaming others which will create guilt with with regards to yourself so in actual fact some of the steps that you're talking about are particularly helpful because it's about protecting your well-being the challenge generally people face when they when they distance themselves from parents is they get judged for it. And people assume that you should try and do something. They don't actually get how difficult 
it can be. Mm. And it, it's not an easy decision to come to. And so what, what I'd encourage you to, it's, it's a gradual process as well. You know, it doesn't mean you just flip to no contact. It may mean you have short bursts with that person. Sometimes difficult parents can be better in crowds. You start to work out what works for you, but, but just understand that people won't always get it. All right. So, well, when you talk about, you know, relationships with, you know, just people you meet, if they're toxic or controlling or coercive, you know, you, you get out, you protect yourself. You know what I mean? You make that tough decision. Do the same rules apply with, with, with family? Because, OK, yes, there is that genetic and, and blood connection, right? But if it's at such an unhealthy relationship, there's no obligation to maintain a relationship with family. Sometimes is it best just to cut it or does that have a ripple effect? Well, when I... You know, I work with a lot of Asian clients as well, and they come from collective communities where it is all about family. And so, you know, whether you're from, you know, a collective community or, or, or West traditional Western, it's very difficult for people to cut family off. Yeah, it's a really good point that, you make there. It's different. And that from, is, yeah. is never yeah. easy uh, for people. There's power, there's dynamics, there's money, there's finances. Let's be honest, there's also wills, estates, very good points, inheritances. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot that absolutely go, goes on. And so it's a very tentative, sensitive um, process, especially if you have toxic family members. And some, sometimes it's about helping people to strategize, develop strategies to stay um, and to help cope. And that's why I'm a fan of coping mechanisms, if we know what the root cause is. Mm. You don't just give people coping mechanisms without understanding what the deeper stuff is, but it enables people to become much more clearer about how to navigate a difficult, a difficult terrain. And cutting off family members, you know, is, is not easy for people. Yeah, OK. Really not easy. Someone else has picked up on our first question. It's about the, 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 the woman head over heels with a fella. Her friend saw him on social media. They connected and she's chatting away to them. He, she has a casual relationship with this person, but still communicating with them. And she's just gone down a, 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 a road there. And this caller says the friend with the new partner might feel it's the friend going behind her back by choosing this man to communicate with online. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a difficult one to unravel. Um, a caller says, uh, the lack of intimacy has left me distant and discontent. I don't want to lose my partner but I need more. This is sounds very much like a conversation those two people need to be having with each other as well, as difficult as it is. And maybe what you have to say might be that push, uh, Keely. Absolutely. Well, intimacy is a real fundamental part of, of, of relationships, intimacy and sex. And so if that is not in the relationship, that it matters. It's really important to, to highlight that that matters and to get curious about what that is about. Now, that might be a difficult conversation to have. However, it's worthy of having it because if not, it will show up elsewhere in the relationship. We also know generally people can re remove intimacy from the relationship and sex as a form of punishment or sanction, it, you know, depending on how your dynamics are. So it may, you know, how can you have a conversation about that? I'd encourage you to try to have the conversation about that and see what occurs. Now, if you're particularly needy, um, that's also something to address mm. your neediness because sometimes that can burn people out. Because you know, in, in terms of sight, intimacy obviously isn't always about what's in the bedroom or wherever else takes you fancy. Of course, it can be, you know, a meaningful kiss. It can be a hug. It can be a, a stroke or a touch. Sometimes partners might give back what's projected onto them as well. Do you know what I mean? Is it possible that maybe the other partner feels a bit awkward doing that because the one that's texted into us, maybe they're not offering those, you know, those sort yeah. of intimate gestures as well. And it becomes an awkward space. Absolutely. Especially, you know what life is like. It gets ordinary if we're not grooming, if we've let let if we've let the, the forest grow. I shaved for you today, so say nothing, all right? Have we got any evidence for that? Well, it's not on my neck. <laughs> All right, okay, listen, calm down, Keely. We'll keep it above above the neck. <laughs> above the navel. <laughs> well, like I said, right, you know, the, these things, all, we can all get tired and, and, and things can become a bit stale. So it can be time for, let's call it a review of where things, where we're at 
you know, what we also want for ourselves, but what is also happening with the intimacy, but also those touch points, you know, if someone's cooking breakfast, the t- like what is also happening around those areas outside of the bedroom, has that diminished? What might be going on in the relationship? All right. Uh, a comment here. I had a narcissistic mother. I was in my 50s when I cut her out of my life. And I can tell you I was judged. Uh, it took a lot of therapy to get me to the other side. She passed away since, but it's in my mind every day. It's a very, very hard road. That is the the, the exactly what you were talking about and how it's different Absolutely. maybe from, you know, a, a relationship with someone that you, you meet in your life. Uh, lastly, I'm trying to find love in 2022. How can I do that? Can you... F- seek out love or does it have to just arrive at the right time well it depends you know some people can be much more proactive and and deliberately go on a campaign to find that person i'm much more i I find for myself personally i'm not good when i force things things don't really happen in a way that is helpful to me i'm much more interested in in pursuing things that i like interests and then meeting like-minded people along that journey i find that a much a, a much more richer way to to meet people. I particularly don't do well online swiping to the left. You know, judging someone on 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 the on the visual dynamic doesn't necessarily work for me. I don't tend to read the text. I tend to look and and discriminate. But actually, I've given many an ugly man a chance <laughs> just by meeting him and meeting his personality. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was uh, no. obviously people you know would be familiar with the word catfishing. Um, but I heard the phrase yesterday for the first time, mask fishing. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Oh, that what's people, that one? It's people, you know, you get to know someone with the wearing a mask and then. Oh, wow. I know. Well, they, I don't think well, it's really a thing, but it's the it's what the young ones are talking about, mask fishing. Well, they, there you go, right? It's it's with the filters. and I mean, you know, my daughter put a filter on the phone the other day and I'm like, I want to look like yes. that person in the phone because that clearly is not. <laughs> it's not me it's just one of the benefits like try different strategies you could try doing the whole online thing which comes with its challenges let's be honest but also are there any interests or pursuits to help you get out of your comfort zone? because instantly with that as well you're, you're going to be meeting people with shared interests or at least in the same space as wanting to like if you like to travel right there's no point swiping on someone having seven or eight dates really liking them and find out that they don't really like to go anywhere but there if you, you go. yeah, okay, all right, makes sense. All right, Absolutely. Kelly, listen, if people want to engage with you on a more personal level, uh, you are a uh, psychotherapist, author, and coach, and your website address is what, Keely? Keyforchange.com, that's number four, or you can write F O R, Keely at Keyforchange. Because you covered all bases. Come on. All right, listen, thank you. <laughs> As always, have a great one. That's uh, Keely uh, Tavener there.